Tip number one, know your students. The students and the quality of their education is your responsibility. They are the whole point of your job. Knowing students and building a relationship with them has all sorts of advantages. It creates trust in which students will be more willing to learn from you. Both anecdotally and psychologically, I know, if you hate your teacher, it doesn't matter how good their information is. If you don't respect them, you don't want to learn from them. Also, knowing your students allows you to make customized lessons, involving the students more in what they are learning. So, where should you start? Start with memorizing students' names. This one might be difficult, but do your best. Then move on to some of the following. Likes, dislikes, interests, future aspirations, heroes, sports, favorite anime, and manga. Know which students need extra help, which ones are more independent, and which ones won't work without you looking over their shoulder. Naturally, you're going to remember the names of the students who are the worst and the best better than those who are quiet and average, but don't forget about your average students. Many quietly admire you. I recommend keeping a notebook to write this information in. Also, at the start of the school year, some teachers hand out questionnaires or surveys to get to know their students better. You could consider doing this as well. Tip number two, give them a little praise often. Use stickers, say good job, or shoot out a thumbs up, or even a legendary double thumbs up. I would say don't go overboard, and certainly say big praise for seriously excellent work. This encourages students who work hard, and even students who don't work hard will be encouraged to work because they want praise too. Conversely, seldom scold. As an ALT on the JET program, you aren't contractually responsible for student discipline, which is to say you must not punish, yell at, or take a student aside to correct their behavior. That being said, there are situations where you can bend these rules. For example, you can ask a sleeping student if they are okay. Also, if you do see a student doing something obviously wrong, or something wrong is being done to you, you can tell that student dame, which means not allowed in Japanese, with varying degrees of loudness and severity. For example, if I see a student drawing on their desk, I'll tell them it's cute, but also dame, please stop. If a student is attempting to bully me, I'll be much more intimidating and forceful. Disrespecting me is not an enjoyable experience. Use your own discretion for praise and punishment. Tip number three. If you want to be a role model and inspire students, be a role model and do inspirational things. Don't participate in activities outside of school you wouldn't be proud of to tell your students about. I sometimes wonder how many teachers experience cognitive dissonance pretending to be a role model in school but having a disastrous and self-indulgent personal life. Obviously, you don't need to showcase your entire personal life for your class to see, and you don't need to be a paragon of excellence. Nobody is perfect. But if you have a poor reputation, how does that reflect on you? Think of your students growing up and acting as you do. Would you be proud of them if they took your actions? Are you acting as an example or as an example of what not to do? Tip number four. The best way to teach is to involve the students. If you know your students, you can already tailor your lessons, prepare inside jokes, and target certain students effectively. The worst way to teach young students, and maybe students in general, is to explain to them, like a university lecture. What's more effective, listening to a teacher explain English grammar all class, or listening to a short explanation and spending the rest of the class reading, writing, speaking, and playing a physical game with that English grammar. I think you and I both know the answer. Tip number five, speaking of preparation, talk to your JTEs and plan and prepare lessons, or part of the lesson, or a lesson idea you have. This will make your lessons better, and your improvisation better too, as you'll be able to adapt existing lessons and games to the current lesson you are teaching. How do you do this? Start with meeting with your JTEs briefly in the morning and ask, what should we do for today's lesson? When you ask this, you should already have a few ideas in mind that you could use or adapt for your JTE. 
but don't have an ego and set your ideas in concrete. If your JTE doesn't want to use your idea, it's okay. Use their idea instead. Tip number six, fake it till you make it. You won't feel confident in front of a class for a while. Over time, as the students get used to you and gain respect for you because you're friendly, funny, cool, and a good role model, it won't feel so awkward. In fact, they might get too comfortable with you, but that's a good problem to have. It's easier to rein students in than it is to push them forward. Tip number seven, silence is the answer. If students are talking over you or are being noisy, the most powerful tool you have is silence. Stop the lesson and wait for them to finish. You don't have to yell, clap, or raise your arms for yourself. Simply stop talking, look at them, and they'll get the idea. If students are interrupting somebody else, then you can ask them to listen. Tip number eight. Just like people have personalities, classes have their own personalities too, and you must be aware of the personality of the class you are teaching. Some classes are negative, indifferent, or even hostile. Some are cheerful, energetic, and happy to see you. Some are high energy, some low energy. Prepare your lessons accordingly. A high energy, high participation game will likely fail if it's used on a class with low participation and low energy. Tip number nine, have a teacher voice. The volume you should speak at is a little louder than just regular talking level. Why? You want to make sure everyone in the class can hear you clearly. Think of every lesson as a presentation. I once worked with a teacher who would use conversational level volume in classes, and not only was it hard to hear her, but she didn't seem very confident in what she was talking about. As a bold Basson viewer, you are a confident English expert, so you better damn well teach like it. Tip number 10, know when to walk away. If a student doesn't want to be helped, is ignoring you, or won't work without you literally writing with their own hand, walk away and help someone else. Your attention is better spent supporting a student who wants to learn. This doesn't mean you should not try to help the troubled student, but if a student doesn't want help, you can't help them, even if you do. Part of learning is wanting to learn. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Tip number 11. My top secret 11th tip is use humor in your lessons. So many classes are dry, repetitive, and dull. Students are dying for a little entertainment, to laugh. When appropriate, make jokes, make funny noises, go overboard on some gestures, be a little unpredictable, draw funny pictures on the chalkboard, in PowerPoints, play funny noises or have funny pictures or GIFs, make fun of yourself, take a joke and tell funny stories. If you can make a class laugh right at the start of the lesson, it'll be easier to make them laugh again and they're more likely to enjoy your lesson and participate. There's a caveat to humor. Never make fun of a student or a fellow teacher, no matter how tempting it is. Always make yourself the butt of the jokes. Instead, make your fellow teachers and your students look good. Always put them in a positive light. Also, sometimes your jokes will fall flat. Don't sweat it. Attack again with an even worse joke. If students start groaning in pain from your bad jokes, that's a victory too. Do you have any teaching tips you'd like to add? Please share in the comments down below. That's all for now. Take care and be bold.